Hello everybody. So this video is coming after a video I just cut, which was um, straight talk about holdings and which was a very cosmic sort of uh, video. And this one's going to try to be a little bit more practical because this teaching does not just address the loftiest truths. It also addresses the nonsense, which is this, which is the idea that there's somebody here and there's something, something, and, and there's something going on and there's something happening and that there's meaning and purpose and all of this stuff. And, and uh, what I want to tell you is that as long as it feels like that, do your best. That simple. Do your best. Isn't that nuts? The best advice that a sage can give you is do your best. But that's the truth. What have you been doing all of your life? You've been doing your best. You've actually been doing the only thing you could do. It felt like you had options. It felt like you had choices, but you didn't. But as long as it feels like there's someone over there to, to, that has options and can make choices and all of that and decisions, then make the wisest, most compassionate decisions that you can. Do your very best. You can't not do your very best, even if your very best sucks out loud, like mine used to. And who knows, it might now from some, from some perch. But it's, we do what we do because that's the way things are going. That's the experience of the habit. And there's a sense of there's a sense of, of agency, but it's just a sense. I mean, I had a strong sense it was going to rain here this morning, and it didn't. And uh, so the sense of something is not the same thing as the truth of something. It's uh, it's just mere it's it's an ex, it's an experience, but there's no experiencer. That's just what's weird. But as long as it feels like there's an experiencer, do your best. Just do your best. See, and, you, and make the wisest, most compassionate decisions that you possibly can, even if that includes stealing a purse on the subway, right? I mean, it's the, it, 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 do your best. And if your best includes uh, stealing a purse on a subway, uh, then there's going to be a sense of a you that is, that if, if caught, is going to get punished for that. And, 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 and the body kind of takes the rap for these things within the, the world of experience. Um, but there couldn't have anything else happened. So don't, don't berate yourself. The body will get punished. Let's just, I mean, if it gets caught, I, this one did, right? I've got, it got caught in a bunch of stuff and it really got in a lot of hot water. And, um, it, and, and, that, and that long arm of, quote, karma, uh, still uh, is still there. There's, you know, there, there's the, the shadows, but, but you never really get rid of your past as long as you're living as a human being. Not that there is a path, but past, but there will feel like a past. And as long as there feels like a past, my best advice to you is give up resisting it. Like, oh, I shouldn't have. Really? Is that right? You shouldn't have? I mean, uh, pardon me. That's telling me that I need to send out my email for Satsang, and I'll do that when I'm when I'm done with this video, but not before. So, um, there is there there is this there is a sense of agency, but no one has it. But you don't need to see. So you don't need. I'm just telling you that to tell you that something close to the truth. I'm not telling you that because I think that that's going to be particularly helpful to you. You do your best because there's only what's happening and it happens exactly the way that it does. There's no such thing as it sh as should or would or could. There's only this happening. And we can resist the past if we want. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. God Almighty, I have got a long list of shouldn'ts, right? but I've long since given up on, on sugar. It just, the, the, it is what it is. And it's, and it's just an experience of past. There's actually no one here that has a past, but there's an experience of one. And I notice that it's not all pleasant by any means, but mostly now it's pleasant, I must say. And it doesn't mean that if you get enlightened that everything goes 
uh, uh, you know, right in your life for you. I can just, I can just report on what's happening here. What's happening here is that uh, things didn't go particularly smooth for the first few, few years of enlightenment, if, uh, if I, you want to call it that. Uh, but they certainly, um, but they certainly do now, and it's just that's what's happening. I do my best. I've been doing my best. Betsy and I had done our best. We were sitting outside last night or yesterday, yesterday afternoon in our yard with the newly fenced in this little area on the side that we kind of set aside to be my little sort of sitting meditation place, reflection place, whatever. And we were just, and we, we can't believe that this is our house. We can't, we haven't done anything to get here. It's, 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 it's hard evidence of the dream nature of this experience that we're even in it. Right. But, and there, and I knew what I was saying when I said it and I said, you know, uh, I don't want to say, and then I just said, but I'm going to say it anyway. I said, you know, I'm kind of proud of these units. Right. And I am because Betsy and I have worked our asses off for almost 20 years. And, and there's something here to show for that. None of it exists. There's no Fred. There's no Betsy. There's no 20 years. There's no time. There's no time. There's no space. There's none of that. But there's an experience of a Fred. There's an experience of a Betsy. There's an experience of a teaching. I have a story that I tell about this teaching. That's the story I tell myself is that it's important. And I get emails every day that validate that and comments every day that validate that. Um, but of course, it's not true. I mean, the earth is going to fall into the sun, right? It's, it's, it's w w w what is the meaning? What is the purpose? What is the, there's not one, but it feels like there's one. So live up to that. Don't go to the, I'm going to, you know, oh, there's nothing in here. There's nothing going on. And I am going to go sit on the sofa and watch cartoons and drink beer. But if you do that, that is your new practice in trying to get enlightenment by doing nothing or trying to clear up by getting nothing but you've had it because the, the, the really I tell you an enlightenment experience can be a really insidious thing because I mean I, I had one in 1992 it was 14 years before I had another and I just couldn't get that thing out of my mind it haunted me it haunted me which is a good thing because um, when suffering came about, then in a large enough dose, then awakening occurred here, and I knew what it was, right? And I and I suddenly and I had uh, immediate context for what what was oh, it, awakening just occurred. It didn't occur to the one I thought it would occur to. I didn't occur to Fred, but it did occur. It didn't occur to me because. I mean, I, I say me, and I say my world, this world, your world, the, and my world, and all that is just languaging. It's just languaging. There's no, there's no me. There's no you. There's, as I said in the last video, there is only wholeness. But there is the experience of separation, and we can't get away from it. Just the same thing that we can read over and over and over again. I'm not the body. I'm not the body. And I'll tell you that three or four times a week, people will come to me and maybe sometimes some weeks, five times. And I'll try to do, do one awakening session a day. And they come to me and they, um, and they say, uh, so Fred, I, I, I understand this. I understand it intellectually. It's just not my experience and I have to show them that they have it exactly wrong that this is a whiteness see this is a whiteness what's talking to you well in God Almighty, I'm going to go cosmic again let me pull back go back for practical answers to everyday challenges so if you if you have a job go to the job until it doesn't but go to the job. If, you, if you're on the sofa and you just don't feel like you can get off of it and go to work, get off of it and go to work anyway. Just do it. Don't think about it because that's what you're doing is you're sitting on that couch and you're thinking about, well, oh, I should do this. I need to do that. 
you're out of awakening right there. That's not awakeness. Because awakeness is not trying to figure out its next move. There is only the next movement, which is just really the next movement is like a, a frameable movie movement. It's a, it's a, it's a, <clears throat> but it feels like a, right? And, uh, but it's the <clears throat> nature of it that makes us think that, that we're in a, a movie versus the fact that there is only a movie, if you will. The movie doesn't say it, but it says it about as well as anything I can think of right at the moment. Do your best. Just try your hardest. Run your fastest. Try your hardest. That's what they used to say for PS Flyers when I was a kid. Those are kids like sneakers. <laughs> to go back, <clears throat> I have to tell my age here, as if I care. I'm timeless. So are you because we're the same thing. But it won't feel like we're the same thing. It feels like there's a that there's a Fred Davis spiritual own teacher over here, and it feels like there's a Bob Smith or Mary Jones unstudent over there. May even feel like there's a student, but there's not. There's no student here and there's no teacher. But there's the experience of student and there's the experience of teacher. And both of those things are valid and we honor them. Because it's not, I promise you, it's not that there's only the vastness and, and, and no relativity. It's not that am I Fred or am I the, the vastness? I'm both. Because there's only experience and that which is undiscussable, that which is unthinkable, just can't be thought of. I mean, it can't actually be thought of. I can't, it's not thought of here. It's not like I have something in mind that I'm trying to put across to you. There's, there's just this happening. There's just this happening. And it's sort of infectious. Uh, not always. You know, I once uh, woke up a guy that spent 17 years with Osho, I'll say that since he's dead. We spent 17 years with Osho, and uh, but he had no clue who he was. In that case, assuming that Osho was awake, uh, which I mean, it, I have no reason to, to think he wasn't, except for I can notice that at times there was deep confusion and, and, and movement back into the dream. You know, it could happen to anybody. It could happen to, it could, it could happen to me. When I say me, what am I talking about? I'm talking about this unit. This unit could go crazy tomorrow. I don't know. Right? So don't, don't pin your hopes on this unit. Right? Just don't. Because it'll let you down. It just will. It, it, you know, I, there's no possible way that I can live up to the projection that people have of me. So I just got to be me. And it's not always, um, you know, and it's just not, not always palatable right and uh, like this thing can have you know uh, emotions arrive here rise here and thoughts arise here still um, none of that stuff is taken very seriously very long but those emotions which are really thoughts caught in the body they can be pretty tricky until they're not and I had that experience just this week and uh, what did I do about it uh, I just kept on going through, putting one foot in front of the other. And that's what I recommend that you do one step at a time, one day at a time, just, you know, just, and, and they used to tell me in AA, just do the next right thing. And I never knew what the next right thing was. I had never known what the right thing to do was. And I certainly didn't know it any better when they told me to do that. So I just did, did the next thing that came to mind because I can't, do and neither can you do anything you don't you're not you're not hatching your own thoughts just notice you don't know what you're going to be doing an hour from now you can predict it but it may not come true you can you can, you're, you're not an idiot you can spot a pattern and 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 predict based on that pattern what might be happening in an hour but you might have been hit by a truck in an hour predict that right i mean if we could predict uh, if we if we knew what was really going on here, we would never walk out into the street in front of a truck. And it's, we wouldn't, and, and we're not controlling our thoughts. 
because I, if we were controlling our thoughts, we'd certainly look both ways. Do you see that? But I'm just, there's just walking out into the street. There's no, there's, there's no one there saying, wait, wait, wait just a minute. You're, there's a pattern there of looking both ways, but that is no guarantee that looking both ways will happen. Do your best. Do your best. Try your hardest. Be as good as you can. And don't resist the whatever that good as you can turns out to be. We, there, you just can't because it's not you, right? But as long as it feels like there's a you, you need to do what it feels like is best for that, for, for all, right? What's nothing wrong with then the unit's not a special unit, but it's not, not any less than any other unit. So it counts, it just doesn't matter. But, you know, we just want to try to do our best because we can't not anyway. If I'm a born thief, I'm a born thief. And can, can, can I change? No, because there's no I here, but I can, I can, I can, but whatever sense of Fred is here can be changed. That I want to promise you. Because there is no, there's no free will because there's no one to have free will or not to have free will. But here I said practical every day. So here it is. There's no free will, but there, just the experience. I'm reporting my experience. This is not philosophy. The experience is that there's influence. There's influence. Influence comes through not non-judgmental noticing. There's a there's a there's a unskill what I because again it doesn't make us idiots. We can see an unskillful pattern. We just can't stop it. But what we can do is we can notice it. And we can continue to notice it. And when we notice that unskillful pattern, what's noticing the unskillful pattern is not part of the unskillful pattern. It's actually awakeness, which is noticing unconscious awakeness and just that it's patently ridiculous. <laughs> you know, when I, I mean, if I look at this thing on the relative level, I mean, it's just an idiot. It really is just an idiot. It's just, it's just, it's a charming little idiot, but it's just an idiot. I mean, it just is so wrapped up in all this stuff that from the cosmic view is meaningless, but from this view is precious to me. Let it be precious. Why not? You can't not let it. You're not, you can, you can, you can, you can sort of work against yourself by, by being resistant. I don't understand how that works because you can't be resistant unless that's what's going on, part of what's going on but it occurs anyway. See, the thing about, as I said in the last one, you can't understand this because what's actually happening is paradoxical. That's the reason I don't call what I do non-duality other than for as a marketing term. But when it really gets down to serious, I never talk about the fact this non-duality. I don't even know what the hell that is. I know what non-dual philosophies point at, all of this, that, and the other. But see, they know what can happen and can't happen. I don't. They know what you should do in order to wake up. I have no idea. But I can tell you that there is, does appear to be a, there's, that, that there seems to be a lot of contagiousness around this unit. If you're listening to it, the odds are you're either awake or you're going to wake or you've been awake and you're going to clear or you want to clear or you're whatever. So, and, that, and it's not just this one. I, I mean, uh, whatever spiritual teacher you gravitate toward, this is just one that happens to be a spiritual unteacher. I don't have anything to teach you, but God Almighty, you know so much that it's going to spend. It's going to take me years and years, perhaps, or ninety minutes, <laughs> which is the case, to help you see through all of the stuff that you think you know that you that it just isn't true. That's the problem. It's not that the truth is not here, that it's not obvious, that it's not visible. It's just that we're mired in thought. We're believing thoughts that are not true. What's believing thoughts that are not true? Wholeness. Thoughts arise within wholeness, but they don't arise to wholeness. See? Because they can't. They're part of wholeness. There's no separate wholeness for them to, to take part in. So we just accept 
this uh, the very best we can, as gracefully as we can. And if and if and if we resist the heck out of this moment, resist the heck out of this moment, and don't don't try to beat yourself up about it, because that's the you're not you are not forming these thoughts. Your ancestors are forming these thoughts for you. Uh, the world, the conditioning of the world and your immediate circumstances and the vast circumstances of global warming and everything else, all of that's making decisions for you. So, and when I say they're making it for you, I'm really talking about the experience of a unit over there. I'm not talking about a separate anybody. Do your best. Years ago, a young woman asked me, she had just graduated from college and she had actually just had an awakening experience with me, but it was fleeting and she, but she had, you know, she popped through, but then popped right back in. And so she came up to me after the thing and she said, well, Fred, what do I do now? And I told her, well, the, my advice to you is to um, decide, notice which way the wind is blowing and be willing to move in that direction. And that's my advice to you today. Thanks. Bye-bye now. <laughs>